What's up guys, the Comics Kid 2099 here. It's been a little while since I've talked about a comic book related thing outside of my X-Men videos. A lot of my recent videos, it seems like, have been movies or TV shows stuff. So I wanted to talk about a comic book that I read within the last two weeks. This is Sinestro the Demon Within. This is volume one of the series written by Colin Bunn and drawn by Dale Eaglesham and Rags Morales. Uh, this collects material from Green Lantern 24.1 uh, it collects Sinestro's issues 1 through 5 and Sinestro Future's End issue 1. So it's a nice little bit of content here. And the first issue here, I'm assuming, is the Green Lantern 24.1 issue, which is basically just a summary of, Green, of Sinestro's backstory so far. And if you're like me, I don't read a lot of Green Lantern. I really don't care about Hal Jordan, and he's basically the focal point of the Green Lantern mythos, uh, has been for the last decade or so, and then about 20 years before that, uh, he was the focal point for the last, like, 30 years before that. So, he's basically the main character within the Green Lantern world, and I just don't care about Hal Jordan. I don't find him to be a very interesting character, but I like Cohen Bunn. I like a lot of the stuff that he does, and when I found out that he was doing a Sinestro series, I was very intrigued. I do wish that this was a little bit more of a reboot. I wish that this wasn't in a franchise that had so much backstory because when DC Comics did their reboot with the New 52, the two franchises that basically were the least affected were Green Lantern and Batman. And so basically everything in the Green Lantern world still counts. And so they needed something for people like me who don't care about Green Lantern and don't read a lot of Green Lantern but might read this. They needed something to kind of catch everyone up. And so that first issue it's narrated by this girl, I don't even remember her name, she's from uh, one of the, uh, she's a Tolokian, and the Tolokians are uh, present in the Legion 89 series that I really like, and the Legion of Superheroes series as well. She's an evil Tolokian, and she is like the keeper of the past, or something like that. And basically, that whole first issue is just summing up uh, Sinestro, and giving you everything that you need to know about him. And then, the rest of this book, we find out that Sinestro, he had formed his own core of uh, Sinestro, the Sinestro Corps, people who have yellow rings and they operate on fear, and they use fear, at least his intentions for the core, was to use fear to uh, create law and order throughout the universe. Uh, so he's not a bad guy, but I want to get into that in a minute. He's not like just the most evil person in the universe. He has good intentions, but his method of getting to those intentions is extremely questionable. And uh, that's kind of his modus operandi in this series. And we find out that he left the core at some point, and I don't know the details of that. All I know is at the beginning of the story, he left the core, and then he finds out that some of his people are still alive, because apparently he was under the impression that his entire planet had been destroyed and all of his people were still dead. Apparently, some of his people are still alive, so he goes back to his core that he left, and he takes over it again, and he is going to use his core to protect his home world, or protect his people, the people who are left from his home world. And that's kind of his new mission, and that's kind of the mission statement of this series. And of course, he's going to run into conflict with other people. Uh, his own daughter is a Green Lantern, and she has a very strained relationship with him, but I'll get to her in a minute, but we can see gradually they're starting to build a relationship that's less strained, and that's really interesting to see that slowly develop. And also, uh, he's got conflict with Hal Jordan, his former pupil, and now his enemy. And that's a very interesting relationship there. It kind of sort of reminds me of the relationship between Magneto and Charles Xavier. Uh, they're still sort of friends. Here, a few different times in this book, Sinestro specifically tells the people in his core, the Green Lanterns are not our enemies. We are not going to go to war with the Green Lanterns. And that's a very interesting perspective from this villain, because he is a villain in the Green Lantern world, but he does not consider the Green Lanterns his enemies. And when he gets his army back, he does not intend to go and make war with them. Of course, Hal Jordan still kind of has a problem with Sinestro because of other things that he's done, and Sinestro kind of uh, slaps Hal Jordan around a little bit in this book, and I found that to be extremely awesome because I don't like Hal Jordan. And then the book ends uh, set on, in an issue set five years in the future, and that is part of the uh, Future's End storyline, which I know absolutely nothing about it. All I know is that apparently every issue uh, or every series at DC Comics had one issue set five years in the future and this one was very interesting because 
uh, I'm assuming it's showing us kind of the direction that Cohen Bunn wants to move in with the rest of the series. But now we get to see how is he going to move towards that direction. Uh, for example, we see that in this future, just as a slight spoiler, Sinestro's daughter is no longer a Green Lantern. She's now a Sinestro Lantern. She's got a yellow ring now. And so it seems like these two have kind of mended their fences and they are no longer at such odds with each other. And I found that very interesting. And whenever I get Volume 2, I'm very much looking forward to seeing if these two slowly start to build a relationship with each other or if this possible future in the future's end storyline if it is a possible future or if it's a set future are we actually going to see some of that stuff that we saw in the future's end stuff come to hap come to pass or is it all going to be averted because that's just a possible future or something like that and what i really liked about that issue the sinestro future's end issue is that you don't have to go and read the future's end storyline to read that issue. I have not read the Future's End storyline. I just read that issue and I felt like it was a very good issue of Sinestro. It felt like it was an extension of this series and not the Future's End crossover. And I feel like that is the best way to do a tie-in issue where you don't have to read the main event that it's tying into if you do, maybe you're getting more out of it. I don't know because I haven't read the Future's End stuff, but I feel like this works more as just an issue of the Sinestro series and less as a tie-in to a big event. I do want to talk about Sinestro a little bit. Uh, like I said, he's not an enemy of the Green Lanterns, but he's not fully a good guy either. He has good intentions, but all of his people who are still alive, they do not like him. Uh, they are very... I don't want to say they're afraid of him, they hate him. Uh, that's what it is, because when he was a Green Lantern, before he uh, fell from grace, if you will, uh, he basically ruled his planet with an iron fist, and none of these people like him at all. In fact, the only ones that are still alive, the only reason that they are still alive, is because they snuck off of the planet to get away from him. And so now, he's kind of coming to grips with this idea that just because he's trying to save his people doesn't necessarily mean that his people want to be saved by him. Uh, they do need protection, obviously, because everyone in the universe pretty much hates his entire species because of him, but they don't necessarily want protection from him. And so that's going to be very interesting. Is he going to kind of rework his methods? Is he going to try and make himself a little bit uh, less hard? Is he going to try and work around the feelings that his people have toward him so that he can protect them better and so that they don't view him as an iron-fisted tyrant? Is he going to try and work around that or is he just going to accept that that is his image and whether these people feel that way about him or not, he's going to protect them? I wonder, I really don't know which direction they're going to go with this character. What's really interesting about this book is that the protagonist is a bad guy. He may not necessarily view himself as an enemy of the Green Lanterns, but he is much more on the side of villainy than he is on heroism. And so when you have a protagonist who's a villain, there's a lot more things that you can do with your protagonist than you could if you have a heroic protagonist. If you had a heroic protagonist and then he finds out that all of his people hate him, chances are you're going to have this guy slowly learn to be a better human being so that, and I say that, I know that he's not a human being, I'm just saying that, he slowly becomes a better person so that his people can come to like him and trust him a little bit more. That's what you would do if you had a heroic protagonist here, but you don't. You have Sinestro as your bad guy, uh, as your protagonist bad guy. And it's really interesting. I have no idea which direction they're going to take this character, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if Colin Bunn keeps him kind of in this area where he's a bad guy, but he doesn't consider himself to be a bad guy, or if he's going to move him slightly more into being a good guy. I'm very interested to see where they go with that. And he does a really good job of keeping us guessing on that, because there's this one point where there's this gigantic spaceship with all of these kidnapped aliens, and some of them belong to uh, Sinestro's home world. And so he tells a few of his minions, he says, okay, get all of these guys out of here. And then someone says, what about all these other aliens? He says, kill them all. I, I don't care. Destroy this spaceship. So he's saving his own people, but this is not a hero. I want to hammer that home. This is not the story of a guy who used to be a bad guy and is now a good guy. He is still got some serious villainous issues here. He may think that he's doing good work, but he's also doing a lot of bad stuff here. And again, there's no real reason that he had to destroy all of those aliens. Maybe he thinks that it would have taken too much time to have saved them, but it's still, you've got a bad guy here that this series is about. He is not a good guy, and I know I keep spinning my wheels here, but I just find it so interesting when you have 
a villain who is the center of his own series because there's so much more that you can do with him than if you have a hero who is the center of his own series. That's about all I have to say here. I really enjoyed this book. I, like I said, I am not a Green Lantern fan. I really don't care about the character of Hal Jordan or just in general the premise of Green Lantern. I think potentially I could be made to care about Green Lantern, but since all of the big stories involve Hal Jordan being at the center of it, I just really don't see myself ever really getting into Green Lantern. But this was a really good entry point into the world of Green Lantern for me. And if you're like me and you don't care about Green Lantern, but you do want to read something that's kind of Green Lantern related, I would suggest getting Sinestro the Demon Within. And I definitely plan on getting Volume 2 of this series when it comes out. I am very much looking forward to reading the rest of the series. And if you heard that DC is kind of sort of getting rid of the New 52 and kind of moving into a new direction, Sinestro is one of the series that's going to keep going after that um, rebranding, if you will. So I'm very much looking forward to this series staying around for a little while. I'm very interested to see what Colin Bunn has planned. And like I said, I have no idea what he has planned. I really don't have even the tiniest guess what he's going to do with this series. And that interests me a whole lot. I definitely love this series. I give it an A++. I highly recommend it to anybody out there who is just looking for some good comics to read. Uh, it doesn't matter if you like Green Lantern or not, because I don't but I still love this series. Uh, that's all I have to say. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different kind of video. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of the day.